Gunnels Diaz Gunners Collective. Back at it. You already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict, right? And as you can tell by today's thumbnail, something different. The Diablo, vato, right? Himself, in the flesh, or maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I can't call it like an alcoholic. But what I am talking about is a story that was told to me, a story that I know about. I did my research. So I was getting a menudo style in a direct fashion. Yes, indeed. I'm going to write graffiti on the bus in a cookie fashion. You like that? It's new, brand new. It's bringing uh, some ambiance to the fucking uh, room right here. Anyways, trip out. Um, the devil. The Devil Dances, right? It's a story out of Stockton, California, the 209 district. Don't get it twisted. We get real optimistic with the ballistics. You know what it is, and we call statistics. In a do-so-9 fashion, it's something that took place, man, and only people from the Central Valley know about it. You know, it could be a folklore story. It could be an old fable. It could be something real fake and not in a real way. Um, but to me, I grasped that story, and I'm about to run with it, and I'm about to let you guys that don't know about the story, whether you're from California, wherever you're from, New York, New Zealand, I know I got a lot of people tapping in with me from everywhere. Um, this is a story that was told to me. This is a story that I researched, and this is the real. So in 1995, there was a, um, a club. It's no longer standing. They recently tore it down, or they tore it down a while back, and it was called the Flamingo. It was right off Charter Way and Wilson Way in Stockton, California, located in the Central Valley, right in the middle of uh, California. And uh, traditionally, that's a Norteño city. Of course, there's Sureños there. There's a little bit of everything there. A lot of white boys, uh, a lot of Africano gangs. Uh, but the majority, I would say, as far as gang-wise, gang population uh, would be Norteños. There's a big Raza population in Stockton. Now, anyone that knows me and knows what I've talked about from the Stockton perspective, it's very cutthroat out there. It's grimy. It's real uh, slithery out there. Motherfuckers will take your flux capacitor and take your heart out. Bato. They're not playing, right? And so that is a perfect city for El Diablo himself to go to. Because Sabasque people over there, in a real way, are wiggling. The wiggleization is very real in the city of Stockton. Um, and I've done a lot of time with a lot of people from Stockton. You know, I've talked about Soldier Boy from Stockton, the homeboy Boo from Stockton. Shout out some respects to those two individuals, man. They're always going to be part of my heart, always going to be part of my history, always going to be part of my story. Um, so when this came to light to me and I was told this story, I always reflect back to the homeboys that I did time with from Stockton. And I was like, damn, that's a trip. It happened out there. So anyways, this casino, the Flamingo Club, and that's the picture of it on the thumbnail. Um, right there off Charter Way, Wilson Way, um, was a popping club. You know, a lot of people know it had been one of the oldest clubs there still standing in Stockton. You know, at that point in time, it's gone now. Um, so a lot of people went there. You know, a lot of people partied there. It was one of those clubs, man, real old, real ramshackle, but was very nice in the inside, man, and was just a spot. It was always popping. It was very old, so it had a lot of history behind it. And so in 1995, the story goes that there was a young girl, a very beautiful girl, you know, that um, was at home, and she was getting ready to go to the club. But she was feeling some type of way that night, and her mother was telling her, you know, maybe you shouldn't go to the club. She was also feeling some type of way. There was just something in the air, man, something that can't be explained the mother's instincts, she knew best what was going on with her daughter. But her daughter, of course, was getting ready. Says, okay, never forget it. Don't regret it. She was putting on her light eyelashes. He told my little lipstick. She was going to go to the club and have it her way that night. And hopefully, man, by any means necessary, she could have some fun that night. You know? So anyway, she ends up going to this club. And everything is good. It's just like a normal night. You know, anyone that's ever been to the clubs or into the club scene, I myself have been to several clubs. Not really my scene. I went there usually for business and not to fucking dance and party. Um, but I've been there. Um, it's just like any other club. You go there, there's a lot of people trying to meet, trying to hook up. Some people are going there just to drink. Some people are going there to do my little fucking linea in the bathroom. Whatever the case may be, key shots are flowing. People are doing their thing at this particular club. And she's having a good time. But in walks a man. And what I'm and the difference with this man to any other man is this man was wearing a white suit and was draped in gold jewelry. Or so the story goes, right? So of course, all lies on me. All eyes were fixed on this guy for one reason or another. He had that that aura about him, I guess. And this is how the story goes from several witnesses that were actually there. He had this aura, this presence that couldn't be denied. You know, everybody was transfixed on this one individual when he walked in the club. And I've been to clubs, man, where people walk in with a tight fit. 
they're bling blinging or whatever the case may be. And people just cannot look away. They're like, damn, that motherfucker got the tight out of Versace shirt. He's doing it in a major way, right? And same thing goes with women. A woman comes out, she's shining above all else. And motherfuckers are like, damn, I'm trying to take that one home tonight. It ain't going to happen. I got the marana and I got a torta. Oh, my. But I wish I had that one. This is usually how it goes. This is what's going through people's mind states or would be going through minds. I could only speak for myself. But anyways, this man walks in and this aura, this presence that he brings into this club, people are drawn to it. Um, and of course, her being one of the most beautiful women there, beautiful girl there, um, immediately they eyeball each other. It's on and crack a in They're about to get it in. So this man asks this woman to dance and they start to dance and they dance several songs. And of course, many witnesses have testified to this and have said that they've seen this is because, like I said, this guy's aura, his presence, it was magnifying. People just wanted to, it was like they were drawn into him, right? So they're watching this couple dance and, um, you know, and this guy's very elegant. I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't there, man. So I don't know exactly what was going into it. I know in 1995, I was incarcerated. I was still young. So I don't know exactly what was going on at that point in time. But I'm sure the wiggle was real. They were out there on some hip hop. Hooray. Ho. But they were dancing. Okay. They were having a good time. And the girl looks down and notices that this guy, this is her own words. And this is other witnesses words that he was floating. His feet were not touching the ground. So she freaked out. She tripped. Now imagine that. You're dancing with someone and you look down and their fucking feet are not on the ground. Orderly Blair Witch Project, right? You're tripping. Something's going on here that ain't normal. Um, so she flipped out. She flipped out. She started to scream. And when she started to scream, everyone looked. You know, all there was already a lot of people looking at this couple, but all the people that weren't focused in on what was going on. You know, you hear a woman scream, so it's you're concerned. And if you're not concerned, you're trying to see what it'd be like. So they all look over there and of course all the lights go out in this club at that exact moment. And uh, when the lights come to after several minutes, man, she's mauled, meaning her body's ripped up. She's torn up. It looked like some claws got into her and she's bloody and people go to, you know, to her and other people go and apprehend this guy because obviously he was the last one with his hands on her. So they thinking that he might have had something to do with this shit, right? So they snatch him up and of course blackers get called. Concerned citizens call the blackers. The cops come a running and gunning and pushing and yelling and falling and busting and doing what they do. Doors are getting kicked in. They come in. They apprehend this guy. And of course, the ambulance comes and takes this girl um, to a hospital for which she succumbed to her wounds later on that evening. Or so the story goes, right? She passed away. Um, I guess the mauling or whatever happened to her was that vicious. Um, so they put this guy, of course, they start questioning him. They throw him in the back of a cop car with handcuffs and they start to get at everybody that was in the club for eyewitness testimony. And I think there was 12 eyewitnesses that all had the similar same story that this man was actually levitating off the ground and about the aura and everything. And then of course you have people that are very traditional being a lot of Raza, a lot of Mexicanos in Stockton. This was like a more Mexicano based club. So there's a lot of uh, uh, Chicanos and Mexicanos there. They all start, they all start saying, es un pinche diablo, right? It's the fucking devil himself came up in here. Um, and they just feel it in their bones. And of course, they talk about he was, like I said, floating on the ground. And what, what all led up to this mauling and how the lights went out. And of course, you know, the Plekas are trying to put two and two together. You know, they're trying to make sure the people aren't on the ten and two, trying to put that together. And clouds are getting blown. But whatever the case may be, this is what actually happens um, as they put this guy in the back of the cop car with handcuffs on. Now, this is where the story takes an even colder twist. Is after the placas are done um, questioning all these witnesses, they go back to take this bottle to the county. You know what I mean? He's going to have to go perform on the black one time for his mind, see if he can get cleared. Um, and he's gone. The handcuffs are laying in the back seat, and mysteriously, he has disappeared, right? Now, this is the story that was told to me by several homeboys from Stockton. This is a story that I researched and I read upon. Um, this is a story that is folklore and is well known in the city of Stockton. If you're from Stockton, you've been there for a long time, you know about this story at the Flamingo Club. Okay, now trip out one time for your mentality. Um, I started to do a deeper research, right? Because I'm not a baoso. I don't believe everything I hear, half of what I read, and nothing really I see, right? So I'm fucking listening to the story as it's being told to me, and I'm not going to disrespect the homeboy. But of course, you know what I mean? Me being of common sense and of sound mind, I say, Sasuke, bang, bang, menudo. This shit is menudo, bro. This shit is, is it, it tastes good and shit, but you know what I mean? It's chorro coming out. So I already knew what time it was. Um, but I started to do my research and talk to other people from Stockton, older people, older Mexicanos, and they all knew the same story. And then I sat down with the bottle man from Texas, right, that I just happened to run into. And he told me the exact same story at a club in Texas, right? So I said, hmm, 
Either you heard this story in Stockton or the people in Stockton heard this story from Texas and Southgate. They're just putting it out there to scare people away from a club. Um, and of course, the owner from the club, when he was interviewed about this from the Stockton Record, yes, the Stockton Record, the newspaper that interviewed him, um, he said this never took place. This was just a rumor that was put out there to dispel people from coming to his club. Basically, his competitors were trying to tear his shit down, get his shit knocked off. And this is just one of the rumors that they put out there. You know, it was a based on story. Based on, but not a true story. So he says, a lot of people beg to differ. They say they were there. They seen it. It is what it is. But this Vato from Tejas told me the same exact fucking story, indubitably, that happened in Texas, right? And then I started reading it happened in Chicago. Then I started to read it happened in LA. Los, stand up, right? Respects. Fresno. A lot of different cities, this same story is being told. So me having common, uh, common sense and a sound mind, um, I got to research it a little bit more. And what I come to find out is this is an old wise tale that is told traditionally from the Raza. Just like the lady in the white dress, just like things of that nature. This is what's being told to the youth and this is just a story. Okay, now of course, the people that were there in Stockton that swear up and down, so I fuck you, gun. I seen that shit, I know what I seen. Bing, ta, I fuck with you and everything, but at the same time, in the meantime, in between time, my antennas were on point when I seen his horns on the dance floor. And I say to myself, okay, so maybe who's wrong here? Was it just a story and people were believing, or did this shit really happen? Now, I'm a true believer in the paranormal. I'm gonna be real. You know what I mean? My channel, you know what my channel is based on. You know how I wiggle. You know what I'm about. But at the end of the day, man, I'm going to give a little bit of everything. I'm going to give a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of scary stories, a little bit of comedy. Oh, my. And I'm going to give a little bit of whatever. You know, I'm going to speak war stories. I'm going to speak my mind. And this I felt I had to put out there because whether it's true or not, it's part of the history of the city of Stockton. And a lot of people believe in this shit. They believe it. And I've always been an open book and I've always been open to say, there's other shit out there. You just never know. Bang, bang. Um, and when it concerns the Valle from where I'm from, 209, and especially the city of Stockton, from which I have a lot of family and a lot of loved ones and a lot of homeboys, um, it just piqued my interest. But to hear from the Vato from Tejas that it happened out there too, and then I hear from a perro in Fresno, arr, arr, that it happened in Fresno, then of course a sureño, if you should lose me, and Los, um, all these stories were pretty much the same. So, you know, me not being a baboso, even though sometimes I look like one, I said, man, bang, bang, man. This story obviously has to be fake, fraud, and fraudulent, and it's just being put out there for one reason or another, okay? Or is it? Think to yourself, gente. Raza, I'm talking to you. Um, if you've heard this story before, you know, put it out there, put, leave a comment, and talk about it. Do you think something like this took place? Do you think that this is real? You know, because I, hey, I believed it. Man, call me a fucking bofo if you want, but I believed it reading it, you know, and I've heard about this story for several years. Like I said, initially it was told to me by a homeboy from Stockton, you know what I mean? Respects, brother. And, um, and I grasped it and I ran with it. But then, you know, obviously when I thought about doing some content on it and thought about bringing it to the plate, I had to do my proper research, my due diligence, and of course really get into my proper investigation to make sure that if I put it out there, I wasn't going to look like a fucking dumbass worse than I already look, right? So, um... I, do my, I did my due diligence on it. And all I can say is, man, what these people in Stockton believe, and I've talked to several individuals, um, they truly believe it. Okay, but like I said, the story's been told many different in many different fashions, all similar. Now, we all know about the story I put out there about the woman in the white dress, and that story was told to me, to, told to me by my Theo, and I absolutely believed he's seen what he said he's seen, because he ain't going to play no games. Don't play no games, boy. We be about killing. You ain't got shit to die for. You shouldn't be living, right? He was on that type of shit, man. He wasn't just talking just to talk and to hear himself talk. He wasn't a YouTuber. This Vato was real life, right? So when he told me the story as a young kid, I fucking ran with this. I scared to this day. I believe him, and I always will. You know, and I've heard several uh, uh, stories in Mexico, uh, Niles Canyon in a Niles fashion. Orale Artie. I've heard a lot of different stories uh, that are very similar. So one can only believe, you know, when it's being told by several different people from several different places and they're true believers, maybe this shit's real. Um, so then you have to look at it from this situation with this devil dance, you know, this, this vato in a white suit. And it's funny because in all these different stories, that's the one common denominator. He's always dancing with a young chick and he's always wearing this white suit. 
So maybe, like I said, it could be a wise tale or there could be some truth behind it. We don't know. This is a big universe. This is a big fucking world. I'm not all skunted out, Holmes. I'm not tripping. I'm being righteous and real when I say it's a big world, right? And you never know what can happen in this world. You never know what is really going on. You know, we don't know everything. We might profess to know everything, but at the end of the day, what do we really know? You know, there can't be good, so I'm scared without no evil. And vice versa, tit for tat, two sides to every coin. I got heads, but it is tails. You know, you just never know. And this ain't a wise tale coming from the gun, and this ain't no shit I'm speaking on that I'm just making up for content purposes. This is an actual factual story that I heard from someone's mouth, and I heard from several others, and I read up on. So something took place. Whether it really happened, of course, looking into research, there was no hyena that ever checked into a hospital that night that passed away. That's a fact. I looked into it. The nightclub owner says, Charlie, that was just caused by my competitors. So I was scared because I was serving Michelob and they had cores. The silver bullet, fuck that shit. We ain't got no werewolves here in Stockton. Um, or do they? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a different story for a different day. Um, but a lot of people told that story. And I just thought traditionally... Coming from a Chicano standpoint, I should put it out for the Raza because it's one of our stories, man. It's something that was told and is continuing to be told, you know, in different cities and different places. And I don't know the gist of it. I don't know the reasoning behind it. I don't know if they're trying to scare people from not going to the club. So I don't go to the club and dance with the devil because the devil dance with the pale moonlight. Orale, I'm not, right? Um, and I especially ain't going to be dancing with no chick that fucking has horns and a tail. Bang, bang. Fuck that, bitch. I'm doing it pushing. You know what I mean? I'm going to find me a torta and wiggle. Um, and have Arby's that night. Bang, bang. Um, but anyway, so that's how it is. Um, but I just thought I would put that story out there for the gente, for the raza, for people in general uh, to kind of dwell on. Something a little bit different coming from Gunners Collective. And let you guys talk about it. And any of you from Stockton or the Stockton area, the Central Hawaii, that could speak on the situation and shed some light on it. Or if it's just a fucking story, an old wise tale that people are telling, man, and ain't no merit to it. Put your comment in the comment section. Let the gun know because bang, bang, I've heard a lot of different stories. And all I can say is what I know. You know, I can't know exactly what I say because I say whatever I feel at that exact moment in time. Um, and we all know that. Bang, bang. Oh, boy. Right? But that's just how it's going. Anyways, with that being said, man, I hope that you guys all go out there and move fast with a purpose. Remember, right here in Gunners Collective, man, we talk about it all, hint it. And that's just what we do. Please hit that like and subscribe. If you don't like this, that's fine. You can hit that thumbs down, heavy as the head that wears the crown. I already know what it is, man. And my neck is lean left, lean back, right? And it is what it is. Anyways, with that being said, like I said, gente, go out there, move fast with a purpose for your familia, for your gente, for the raza, for everyone in general, man. We're all the same, man. And the only way we can get together in this real shit is unite, man. Tell our stories. Tell our loved ones that we love them, man. And show love and faith to our cause and what we truly believe in. And that's the merit of a man. And that's how you judge a man by his merits. Anyways, with that being said, I'm the gun, bang, bang. Um, now, I wanted to say uh, concerning this dance contest thing with me and Dubs, we are looking into it. We are getting it together. Don't sleep on it and don't creep on it, man. We're going to make sure that it happens. It will be brought to you to a theater near you very soon. Now playing. Taran, 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 taran. And you know how we do it, man. A lot of respects for my boy Dubs V over there on his channel doing his thing. The Bangladesh is real. And we're going to try to bring you guys the most proper uh, dance contest we can. So honestly, it's like a fit of Rick and He's going to be over there doing the Humpty Dance. And I'm going to be doing the thriller. Either way, man, we're both winning. And you, the people, are going to be winning even more. Because you can clown all you want to. But Sasuke, I'm like Turbo. He's like Ozone. Ain't no stopping us. No stopping. Anyways, man, that was the dance of the devil in Stockton. You just never know what's real. The gun. Bang, bang. And in that fashion.